I always uh, tell you a story. Uh, things don't come easy. Um, you have a lot of difficulties in your life. Um, but you have to face them both of you. When I came to this country, I didn't have uh, anything on the table or in the plate. And it was extremely difficult for me to adjust in this weather. I have never seen snow in my life. I came here in January, up north in Bradford, where snow used to be about maybe two or three feet high that time. Uh, I have never seen black, uh, black ice, and uh, I used to have very sexy kind of shoes, uh, with very slippery heels, uh, and I just, uh, I was walking in the street, and suddenly I hit the black ice, slipped, went back on my head. I looked around, and over there, <laughs> just tap on my head, walked away. So I learned. Uh, I remember once I was driving um, in snow, never had seen snow, never had driven in my car in snow. So I was going, shh, 40, 50 miles an hour at a traffic light. I applied brake, and instead of going this way, 180 <laughs> degree turn on that rail. Luckily, there was no big lorry or truck coming. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been a disaster. Uh, before I bought the car, I used to walk to work. Never had a car at that time. Uh, I, many of you already know this story, that I used to walk two miles to my work. I used to have big holes in my shoes. And to save my socks get, from getting wet, I used to put plastic and cardboard in them. This is how I started my life here. What you see today, all these big cars and you know, big office and all these people coming here, meeting up with us, you know, prime ministers or, or foreign ministers or other ministers or politicians or, or political leaders or religious leaders. That is due to that hard work, the credibility and track record we have. So we, when we invite these senior professors, like Professor Jonathan's story, from INSEAD and, and Fordham University. These guys don't come easy. Very, very knowledgeable people. Christian, entire life. Now she's written a book, you know, on her life as well. She used to present uh, uh, a big program on MTV, a European channel. Um, so when you speak to these kind of people, when you interact with these people, that helps your personal development process. <coughs> So please listen very carefully. I'm here to listen to Ms. Kara as well. Probably this is the first time I'll be speaking in her uh, lecture. So that is wonderful for me as well. And I'm sure for you. Chris John Back is a TV presenter and journalist based in London uh, with a pan European career. She used to work for MTV Europe, not Germany, <laughs> as mentioned in previous lectures. Um, used to uh, host Matters of Faith uh, for Hebrew TV and has hosted many galas in her time. She also spent time in Pakistan with Imran Khan where she became Muslim as well. Uh, we spoke about success, um, how you know Mr. Qureshi has made it um, into such a successful, uh, creating such a successful institution together with Dr. Malik and um, you know and uh, he was sharing with us a little bit uh, how it all started and um, it all had to do with hard work, absolutely. There's um, an Arabic uh, saying that says, Al-Amlu uh, al uh, work is worship. And um, so definitely it all has to do with, with very hard work. And success, I would say, um, also something important to note is success is not divorced from God. It's not that when anybody becomes successful, they haven't got any more time for God, you know, not got no time for prayer, I'm so successful now, I don't need to work on my success, no. Um, success actually comes from God and is with God. And the Holy Quran it says, um, uh, "My success and my task can only come from Allah. In Him I trust, and unto Him I look." Allah meaning God, of course. Um, and also on the walls of the Alhambra it says, uh, written over and over again, uh, "There's no true success except for with God." And that also comes from the Quran. So all success in the world comes from God. And we mustn't forget that. And it is actually only blessed if it is also pleasing in the way, in one way or the other, to God. If, if, if what we do 
pleases God, if it's a good, positive uh, thing we do. I mean, we can gain, we can earn money in many different ways. But is it blessed? Is it pleasing to God the way we earn our money? This is really a very important question, you know, we, we need to ask ourselves, um, you know, when, when thinking of what to do later. Now, using our talents creatively and making a contribution to the community is a way of serving God. And of course, this is true both for men and women. There's a hadith of the Prophet that says, um, whoever, you know, in the, in the last minute of one's life, you know, still, if you have a palm shoot in your hand, plant it. So, meaning that, you know, even if the world ends to, to uh, the next minute, we're still asked to be active, to make a positive contribution, to, to contribute to the society till the last minute. Um, and really, all work must start with work on oneself, with self-development, in order to strengthen our self-esteem and our faith, and prepare for the challenges ahead, because it can be tough out there. Um, for us women, it's important to remember that the wives of, I mean, are there any women in the room? Yes, there's one. <laughs> for women and for men, I mean, really, for everybody here, uh, I'd like you to remember that um, the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were great, were all were our examples, and they obviously were all busy contributing to the community, you know, and, and not just the home. And if we look into the early Islamic history, we know that women played a prominent role contributing to the community. Uh, there was a health minister, a doctor at the time, time of the prophet, who later became health, became a health minister, had the power to shut down the markets and, um, and, and open them and, and, and shops. Um, the first university in the world, in Fez, the al Qarawin University, was founded in 859 by, a, I think, a 24-year-old woman. And this university continues until today to be a leading spiritual and educational center in the Muslim world. And um, I think it's really important that men and women today remember these examples and the early and the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as um, you know, role models, as, as uh, contributing to the society, and not for men to just you know, want to have a maid at home who does the cleaning and the cooking, and, uh, but not contribute to the wider society, because it is also her duty, and she will be asked one day, you know, we mustn't stand in her way. Um, now, in this life, we all need to embrace our God-given roles and responsibilities and try our best to carry out our duties as well. How do we find out what these roles and responsibilities are? Well, I'll tell you in a little while. Sometimes, of course, we make detours on our way, but I do believe that all experiences we come across in life make us to who we are now and are part and parcel of our journey. In fact, I will. Even our mistakes can lead us to the good, you know. They can be guiding lights to, to what we're really meant to do. I've described in my journey all the essential experiences and lessons and, uh, and, and adventures in my book, From MTV to Mecca, which Mr. Koresh has already mentioned. And um, I would say for me, only really since that book has come out in Germany in 2009, um, I've, I'm really finally doing what I'm meant to be doing. You know, I finally found my mission. I always wondered, why has God called me of all the people in the world, you know, an MTV presenter and so on. And, um, you know, I've been invited to give so many talks and, and speak so much, um, you know, about my story and everything. And people found it always inspiring and um, the kind of feedback I got. I really feel, and then, you know, then all the Islamophobia that I suffered, which finished my career, which obviously I'm now trying to dispel um, with my book. Um, you know, I feel um, it has given me um, yeah, my, my kind of mission in life, so to say, something that I was always looking for, you know, what is it, why am I here on the earth, you know, what is my contribution going to be, and this is the question I want every one of you in the audience to ask yourself, you know, what is it that I'm going to be remembered one day for, what is the, what is, what, which legend, um, legend am I going to leave behind, legacy, sorry, legacy, um, you know, why am I here? Um, yeah, and, um, and I would say as a result of having found this, I feel content, you know, I feel um, fulfilled and also so many amazing doors have started opening. 
And I'm now working on the English version very much, and hopefully it's coming out in August. Um, you know, and of course, well, trust in God is one very important aspect, but tie your camel first. This is another famous hadith. I have learned the hard way we must work on tying our camel. Uh, that means there are certain basic provisions we all need to make, a good education, um, you know, then go out and look for work, you know, and you may not, your first job application may not succeed. You may have to send out 50 job applications or even more and throughout your life. Keep on top of your CV, you know, always have your CV ready, etc. Don't feel disheartened when you're rejected. Um, also, don't take no necessarily for an answer, but carry on. Believe in yourselves. Uh, when you finally found a job, work hard and really try to excel. You know, because in fact, um, as Muslims, whatever we do, wherever we are, we're all also ambassadors of Islam. So the way we conduct our work, the way we behave at work, the, you know, the, the mainstream people, all the people around us will judge Islam through that as well, you know. So whatever, wherever you are, just remember that you are also an ambassador of Islam. And, um, you know, so no matter what, you know, no matter what your faith is, and if you don't have a faith or not, no matter what, we need to work hard and try and excel at what we do. Thank you very much for that, Christian. That was uh, definitely inspiring and uh, a lot of issues you brought up there about personal um, contentment and self-actualization. Um, Mr. Kreshi, I'd just like to invite Mr. Kreshi um, before we get into the question and answer session. And for that, I'm sure a lot of you uh, will have some questions. Mr. Kreshi? And killing and, and all that, that kind of thing. 
and self-worth. People need to know what is their worth. And self-esteem. Many young people particularly, they have gone away from valuing themselves. They are not bothered about the, the, value, the, the, the value of life. Finally, we learned Chinese philosophy as well today. I didn't think we would learn something else, but we have learned Chinese philosophy. And eventually, at the end, let's light the inner candle. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kashi. Um, definitely a great way to end a Friday on a, on a feel-good note, to be honest. Um, you know, especially on in weather like this, you don't really want to be cooped up in a room listening to a lecture, but um, it was it definitely lifted some, some spirits here. Um, I'd like to move on to the question. Question answer, we have three more questions. Um, if, you have, guys, if you have any questions, um, if you, you can raise your hands. I've got a question myself, if I, if I can, if I may, jump the queue and you to speak. What I'd like to ask is that sometimes telling the truth gets you into more trouble <laughs> than uh, doing any good, actually. Um, and and in, in, in that sense, um, you know, how how would you? Uh, what's your view on that? Um, you know, replying to. You're getting shouted at your boss, and if you tell him something else, you know you probably get a smack next. So, um, you know, just to leave it out or to to lie, which is not very good, but to, to lie would would be a better uh, thing to do. Uh, and also, <laughs> sorry, do we really? It's like that. Um, also, uh, the second one is do most of the time to me. <laughs> Start telling me the truth. <laughs> let's take the question from you. Yes. James. I'm all seized the opportunity to thank uh, Christine Baker uh, for her brilliant um, presentation. I must say um, it's very inspiring. I, particularly as a Christian, I discovered a lot of linkage between uh, Christianity and Islam just from what she has just said. And it really touched me deep inside because um, it, she made a lot of um, uh, um, uh, points on, you know, discovering oneself, putting body, mind, and soul together. Uh, it's really inspiring. I appreciate that very much. I, I discovered that there are a lot of um, uh, similarities in various religions, even though today. She talked mainly about um, uh, Islam, but it's religion in general. So um, there is something that has really been bothering me for quite a long time. This issue of uh, religion, diversity. Uh, there's Christianity, there's Islam, there's Buddhism, and a lot of uh, religion in the world. There's a lot of animosity. There's a lot of discrimination, persecution religious wise because of various types of religions. I want to ask you, how do you feel or what are you thinking about the notion of bringing all the world's religions together to reason as one? Because the final point is we are serving a living God. Some do not call it God, some call it a particular entity, but we know the philosophical you know, understanding behind it is that there is a supernatural being. So, how do we go about that? You know, educating people to think one. I'm so pleased you could identify with what I said. Sorry, I can't see you. Because, um, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, all the religions teach the same ethical values, and they all are a rope of mercy from God that connect you up there and bring you salvation, you know, in the end of the day. So, um, really, you know, I feel myself that all these animosities you were describing are more to do with power and economy and, you know, um, and, and politics, you know, and worldly stuff. I mean, no one really, you see, you're not annoyed that I once in a while mention Allah, meaning God, it's the same thing. 
um, um, or uh, you know the fact that I may fast in Ramadan, you may fast in Lent. I mean, that wouldn't cause us animosity, would it? I mean, you know, I think spiritual people don't have a problem with each other. In fact, they have more in common with each other than um, religious people with atheists have. You know, people who don't believe there's an eternal life and there's a responsibility. You know that we're all accountable um, for for our actions. I think. People of any faith have so much more in common than you know we have with people of no faith, and yet we really need to work together for the common good with everybody, whether faith or not faith. It doesn't matter because we we share the same problems, the same you know our economy, the environment, uh, extremism, violence, whatever there is. We all we, we share the same issues, so we really you know I like this one verse in the Quran where it says you know we made you. Uh, all, we could have made you all one, but we made you into different nations and tribes so that you get to know one another. So therefore, you know, vie with each other in doing good deeds, compete with each other in doing good deeds. You will all be brought back one day, you know, and tell you, and you'll be told whatever where you differ. And another saying says, you know, the best of you is the one who's most moral, you know, the one who's most um, righteous. German, and I'm a Sagittarius. Now, these are two strong character traits in me that uh, lead me to being straightforward and telling it how it is, mm. saying the truth. Um, not, I'm sometimes not very diplomatic, and that is perhaps one of my weaknesses. And I can be too blunt, and I have gotten into trouble many times over for precisely the point you mentioned. Um, so I would advise a little bit more diplomacy than I muster up, than I can master on <laughs> many occasions. <laughs> However, I don't think one should go as far as lie. Because lie, you just hurt yourself. And you cloud your own, you know, you cloud, it's like putting a veil in front of your soul and God. Every time you tell a lie, it's lying, you know, almost to God, you know. So, I think we need to be very careful with lying. Best thing to avoid or to stay silent, you know? I mean, a maximum a white lie, I think it's allowed when, when a man tells a woman you're beautiful. You can't say, <laughs> ever say, you look exhausted or you're ugly, okay? <laughs> I don't think it's a woman, maybe it's wife. <laughs>